Greetings from the Nutmeg TV studios. I'm Eric DeMeo. Welcome to Behind the Show, a program created by Nutmeg TV to honor the folks in our community that are producing shows for your benefit and enjoyment. In other words, the content on this channel, for the most part, comes from regular people like you who decided that they'd like to give television a try. I wanted to see what makes them tick, how they got the idea to produce their program, and how they made it happen. So get ready for the show about a show, starting right now. My guest tonight is the distinguished guest of All Sports with Joe and George, Joe Apello. Thanks for being on the show, Joe. You're welcome, Eric. Thanks for having me. So, um, you know, the audience is loving your show. It's all about sports. And uh, let's uh, let's start from the beginning. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up? I'm from Brookfield. Brookfield? Uh, okay. Yeah, I've spent most of my uh, high school, junior high, and high school years in Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Nice middle class community. Okay. Very nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Oldest of five kids. Yeah. Uh, Love sports as a as a youngster, but I wasn't a good. I was a good athlete, but not a strong athlete, not a fast athlete. Mm -hmm. So but one of these guys was always on a team, and always count, and always show up. Kind of knew what was going on. Very smart, but not athletically gifted. It sounds so like it, me. It was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my in high school, I played baseball um, for three years, but I was a catcher. My sophomore year in high school, a catcher from New Orleans moved in. It was all state. So I went to the outfield, uh -huh. you know, to play. And then basketball, I went out for the team every year. Got cut every year. As a senior, I told the coach, I am not being your manager, but I, if I don't make the team, but I made the team as a senior. Uh -huh. Didn't play very much, but I had a good time. We had a good year. And then I went to college and ended up making a JV team in college. Oh, so that cool. was kind of neat. Okay. And uh, baseball, I was one of the smart guys, mm -hmm. good player. Well, the catchers are always the gift. smartest. Yeah, and then I went to college to play baseball, and I, I did okay there. I didn't play that much either, uh -huh. but I was on the team. So. Okay. Uh, what did your parents do? Parents, my dad was a production superintendent at Davis and Geck in Danbury, which is a, a, a division of American Cyanamid. They make uh, sutures and cat gut um, products okay. uh, back then, and uh, worked his way up from. Uh, interesting story about my dad is my dad was raised by blind parents. Oh, really? That's amazing. He was the oldest of four kids in Brooklyn, New York. Dad was blinded at a motorcycle accident at 21. His mom was blinded from birth. They met at a rehab. Wow. And he, so he came home at night, and you know, his parents were blind, and he had to take take control of, the, of his brothers and sisters. Boy, that gives me the chills. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. And he, um, he had dropped out of high school at like 16 to, to you know, make money. Then he moved up to Danbury um, when 19 or 20 and started a family, and then moved to Brookfield. But yeah, that was pretty how interesting. You, so how do you think raising those, I mean, being raised by two, how did that affect his personality? Well, I don't know. He was always... Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I remember seeing my grandparents when I was little, and they, you know, the grandma would touch my face and stuff. They would just, you know. Wow. But it was, uh, I was so little, I didn't really remember mm -hmm. too much. But uh, to tell me some stories where he had fights every day in Brooklyn, you know, you know, people trying to rob him, you know, mm -hmm. he his brother, who was, who was t almost totally blind. Wow. Well, to my, my uncle's blind, and uh, I mean, nowadays it's tough for him. I can't yeah. imagine, though, back then without yep. any of the laws that are. Father was, uh, his, his dad was a piano tuner for a living, and a mother did some kind of uh, piece work or something. To wow. get by. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Well, they say you can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tuna. <laughs> Anyways, um, so you were playing sports in high school. Yeah. Um, what did you do in college? When I went to college, I wanted to, to teach phys ed. Uh -huh. I wanted that since I was little. Uh, I won the phys ed award at Brookfield two years in a row, not because I was the greatest athlete, but because I was one of these guys that studied while I'd go down there and play volleyball or go to class, and, and the phys ed guys loved me and stuff, and I would you know help out everybody. So I got that award for two years in a row, which is kind of neat. Where did and you go to college? I went to Ursinus, uh -huh. it's a small school in Pennsylvania. Okay. I actually wanted to go to Springfield, but it was a snowy day. I was going for my interview, and I couldn't get up there, so I put it off, and then I got on a waiting list. So now I'm like, okay, it's April. What do I do now? Uh -huh. And I found her sign a small school with Division three baseball, which I thought I could play, and I did. Because mm -hmm. um, I wanted to play, but I wasn't good enough to play at a higher level. Uh -huh. you know, I just wasn't. <laughs> so I went there, and uh, it was interesting. I was telling you before, at the time, women's sports wasn't 
anywhere near what it is now. Right. And they had, um, they had the number one field hockey and lacrosse teams in the country for women at that time. Oh, so at your the, college? At college. All the women in my classes were like all Americans from Ohio, Indiana, wow. Maine, uh, everywhere across the country. And they would play, most of them played both sports. So my phys ed class was five guys in 19, I don't mean to be uh, Amazon girls, but girls that were just like animals as far as athletics goes. They yeah. were just the best in the country. Wow. They went there. So that was kind of it. But at the time, I had no concept of what that meant or what it was like, you know, as opposed to nowadays. Because they didn't have the Division One, Two, II, and Three that, that, that they have now. But that was interesting. When I looked back on that, I was like, oh, my God, these girls are amazing. So I wonder if that maybe changed your thoughts or perceptions about women athletes? <sighs> Not at all, because, I, again, I, I didn't, I went to a few games, but I didn't know how good they were. Uh -huh. I just, I didn't know, you know, I just mm -hmm. wasn't something that you, you know, especially being from Connecticut, it wasn't like, you know, back then, I think they played basketball where the girls were four on one side of the court and then two games. It was, it was different. Huh. But that, that was interesting when I look back on that, you know, some of the other uh, science. Then after I graduated from there, I had to get a phys ed job. Mm -hmm. And I got a job in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, Lahaska, Pennsylvania, teaching Quaker school. Um, third through eighth, 15 kids in a whole grade. Wow. And I taught phys ed in shop. Shop, I didn't even know how to <laughs> cut, a, cut a piece of wood, you know. And got a little room in a house down the road. Loved it. That and sounds fun. It was fun for two years. I was happy, you know. Yeah, right out of college. Right out of college, it was good. I made 7000 my first year, <laughs> 77 my second year. And then after my second year there, I went up to the high school to pick up my sister, Joanne, who now runs all the subways that we work for. Uh -huh. And one of the guys told me, said one of the phys ed guys was leaving on the leave of absence, and I had a phys ed opening. So I applied, got the job. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Brookfield to work at where I went to school. So oh. all my... Colleagues were now my former teachers. Oh which my is gosh! Kind of really weird. Right. Yeah. Like, hey, Bob, don't, don't, you know, Mr. Johnson, don't call me Mr. Johnson. Call me Bob, type thing, you know. <laughs> so that was interesting. So you so, went. So when did you start coaching? Uh, that was 19, in the early 80s. Okay. Yeah. So my second year there, um, they, you know, in old days, the, the phys ed people would always coach. Mm -hmm. You know, not like it's nowadays where you have outside guys yeah. and whatnot. So. They talked me into coaching. It was funny because he, uh, the head coach. Uh, what sport was it at first? Football. Okay. Freshman football. And I'm like, I never played the game because uh -huh. when I went to Brookfield, they didn't have a football team. It was too small. So I said, I never played. I know football, but I never played it. And he goes, come on, you know, coach a freshman. I'll be with you every day. Help you out. Well, I saw him for two days. Then he went with his varsity team. But I figured it out. I coached for five years, mm -hmm. freshman. So you knew football just from watching from it? From watching. But I, I couldn't tell anybody, you know, hey, this guy's doing this. Do I do that? I couldn't. Uh -huh. I didn't know the inside lingo on yep. it. But that was, uh, I actually got pretty good. I, you know, I did research, watched video, uh, read books, and yeah. figured it out. And uh, so that was fun with that. It was neat coaching freshman because you're coaching against other freshmen. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, the kids are pure, the kids are kids from 120 pounds, 110 miles to 190. And, <laughs> you know, you can do whatever you want. You can see which kids, right away, you can see which kids are going to be good, which kids had a heart, which kids really wanted to do well, you know. So were, kid, you, were your parents sports fans? Not really. No. Not really, no, not per se. They were always like, they'd come to my games and stuff, but they wouldn't. You know, my dad wouldn't even have a catcher because he's always like cutting down trees or digging holes. How or, about just watching it on TV? Not really, no. So, but you were watching it on TV, right? All the right? time. Yeah? All the time. When I, when I could get to TV what, for my what, sisters. So what was your earliest memory of watching sports? Probably the NBA. Yeah? yeah Channel 8, Jack Twyman, these guys would come on. You know, I, was I, that the Bob Cousy? Uh, no, it was Pete Maravich, that. maybe? Yeah. Okay. Right around that area, yeah. And uh, watching that. Bill that Russell. All the time. Yeah, it was after that, too. It okay. was in, like, in the 80s, yeah. All right. um, but that, that was fun. Uh, and then baseball, you know, I was watching Yankees, you know, from, from day one, because that was the only team out. Really, that was right. the only team out back then. Uh-huh. You know, 11, like, the Yankees were on. What did you think of Howard Cosell? Uh, I think he was different. I think, because you know? I think announcers nowadays, they're so kind of boring. He had all the dr drama and the... you got to watch what you say and everything that you do nowadays. Yeah. Because you're scrutinizing every little thing. You, you, you slip of the tongue. Like, he said something about... The guy runs like a monkey or something. <laughs> Night night football, and he got fired because of that. Oh yeah, that that was something him. Like that, that was him. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you okay. didn't mean it that way, but yeah, you know, interpreted that way. So. All right. So you were coaching foot, uh, football. Then yep. what did you coach after that? Well, I was gonna, I was all set to, to to referee high school basketball, and then and I was teaching phys ed at the high school, mm -hmm. which was great. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Died going to heaven. And the only one to do it was coaching with the kids. You know. Um, the phys ed part was, you know, a piece of cake. You uh -huh. know? And then 
the day before girls basketball season started, the, the women's coach backed off for some reason. They had an opening. He said, you want to do it? I'm like, no, no, I am not coaching girls. I'm uh -huh. not doing it. I never did it before. I, you know, guys, one thing, like, come on, come on. You know, it pays X amount, and you're right here anyway. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. So I did it. Uh -huh. And I think we won three games my first year. And it was interesting. Learned a lot. And then we played Immaculate, which is the Catholic high school in Danbury. Yeah, that's a big school, right? Good school. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not, not big, big but wise, number wise, but uh, prestigious in the fact that it was a great institution of learning, yeah. great administrators, um, really good kids there. I mean, first of all, to get to Immaculate, you got to be bright to get in. If you have any kind of, uh, of you're not the smartest kid in your class, you're not going to get in there. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. They don't, and they don't make any exception. Okay. You could be a, a tremendous athlete, they still won't let you in. Yeah. So one of the girls I knew who played for Max, we need a coach. She's leaving. Why don't you come over? So I'm like, oh, so I went over there and interviewed. I got that job. So I went over there. I started coaching there. It was a funny story, Eric, is that the first day I had a meeting for the kids. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. I walked into Macklin gym. It was a 2.30 meeting because I was coming from Brookfield, teaching Brookfield, but coaching at Macklin. So I walk in the gym. The whole gym is filled with kids and it's bleachers. Every, girl, every little girl had, you know, the Catholic uniform on. And they all sit there with a notebook and, and a pencil. And you could hear a pin drop. I was like, my God, what? You know, in public school, you're lucky to kids show up for me, you uh -huh. know, much less have a pen, pencil, yeah. and listen to what you have to say. I'm like, oh my God. So talk to them, tell them what we're going to do. And it was good. And that was a, it was a beautiful beginning. It was a, it's a different atmosphere, different attitude, different mindset for the kids. You know, yeah. they're, paying, they're, they're paying to go there. Yeah. Parents are, are, you know, are supporting them. And it was an amazing coaching opportunity. Wow. Because the kids are from all over the place, too. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can be from anywhere. And they're paying for it. And uh, they're good. They had like a, a unity or a sense of pride or they root for each other. And it wasn't like I'm scoring 20 points a game and you're not. It was like, let's play yeah. together. And they were happy when other kids played or played well. Yeah. It was really, really great coaching situation. Wow. So cool. I built that up pretty good. Um, every year we got better and better to like the fourth and fifth year. We started getting really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a couple of good players. And uh, I think the fourth or fifth year we made the um, we made we made states. States is only at that point I think it had to be 500. Uh -huh. um, so you know, we at least went 10 wins, and so so we made the states. We did well there, and then we made the league playoffs and and progressed from there. And did by the time I was there, we lost. Uh, we were in two state finals wow. by the time I got out of there. Awesome. My record the last four years was somewhere in the area of about 105, 105 and 12. Wow. The last four years. Oh, yeah, it was man. Pretty, it, was, it was neat. That's great. Because it got to the point where I had really good kids and good program, and I I kind of worked at it. I videotape and films and And, and probably worked in, you know, from, you know, freshman, you know. Yeah. Developed. Nice. Developed. Yeah, and it was, it was continuity, and you know, the kids were great, and, you know, kids would come to our games a little, Junior high kids, I want to play for your coach, and, and and it was just a really good situation. Wow. But at the same time, I left teaching in '87. I was teaching phys ed. I, I got transferred to the middle school, but mm -hmm. I couldn't stand that level. Yeah, middle school is tough. Yeah, tough. I mean, they should send those guys away for a couple <laughs> years. Come back when they're like normal, right? Right. If that sort of speak. So, but what, it was tough, you know. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is different about coaching girls rather than boys? The girls are more coachable. Yeah. You know, uh, they listen to every word you say and take it literally. Yeah. And that could be different too, a different um, a challenge. But they, um, if you know your stuff and teach it well, you'll get results. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, guys have, you know, um, they watch the NBA, they're watching certain styles, they think of this, they think of that, they talk about points, but the girls are more caring, uh, teamwork, um, togetherness, and it, um, so no prima donnas. Yeah, it was much different. And, and a lot of them don't have aspirations of playing in college, uh -huh. where a lot of these the high school kids think they're going to play in the NBA, uh -huh. much less even college. So hmm. um, it was a great situation teaching-wise. And I think all coaches that are successful are great teachers. And you have to be a great teacher to be a good coach, in my yeah. opinion. You mm -hmm. know, break it down and, uh, and teach the right thing. And I was pretty organized. And that was the most important thing in my life at that time. Um, I just really spent a lot of time on that. And... At the same time, I kind of like put the phys ed teaching on the back burner because the coaching, you see immediate results. You see the kids progress, they get bigger, stronger, smarter, and you see them, you see them grow yeah. you know, as individuals. It must and be rewarding. I, I, it was rewarding. You know, and then you get the wins and the accolades and stuff. So that to me was very motivating. Where the phys ed teach, you know, phys ed, you, you, know, you get 25 to 35 kids in a class. Yeah. You got boys and girls, big, small, fat, skinny. And then time to take a tennis, want to lap, stretch. It's time to go back in again. It's yeah. ridiculous, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just, just a, you know, just a, not a good 
motivating situation for me. I, I really enjoyed the coaching. I felt like I was, I felt like I had an impact, a positive impact on kids, and that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know, if I had to do it over again, I would have, I would have stayed with my coaching full time and just like go on to maybe the next level, junior college, college, whatever it may be. I would have just networked myself, and I should have did that. But I was at the point where like, ah, so thirty five. You know, I was like, Eesh. yeah. So so everything's going great at Immaculate. And then, unfortunately, you know, you had some tough times. Yep. Tragedy struck. Yep. Can you tell us about that? Sure. I had, um, we had done very well. Um, we made the playoffs, uh, our league playoffs, and, and played that. And then the next year, we were poised for a big year. I could just see it coming. Yeah. And I had everybody back. And I had, um, um, the first day of practice uh, was 1989. And um, I had just the junior and seniors practicing. And one of the girls felt sick, and she went out in the hallway. And, uh, my JV coach says, she says, oh, you got to go look at Patty. She doesn't feel well. I'm like, I mean, come on, she probably, she probably you know, running too much. So I go in the hallway and look at her. Eric, she was like totally pale. Eyes was dilated and her lips were blue. I was like, oh, my God. We started CPR on her right away, called 911, and she passed. Wow. It was like the worst thing. I mean, she was a 16-year-old girl. All, her, all the other girls were down in the locker room crying. So I went to the hospital, went through that, had to go to the parents' house, talk to the parents. And the saddest thing about that is she had an older brother that died the same exact thing four years earlier in the house. Oh, my God. It's called um, cardiac arrest, um, uh, enlarged heart by, uh, brought on by puberty, undetectable. She had just run across country, had a physical, so, so technically she was good to go, and it just happened that way. And, and she uh, was a talented player, right? Average. Oh, okay. Average player. It wasn't anything that she probably would have been maybe eighth girl on the bench as a junior, a 4.0 student. Um, so we had to go through that. So we had went through the, you know, the burial, and I can remember like it was yesterday. And then we had to play our season. So um, we dedicated the season to her. We won 21 in a row. We were the number one team in the Hartford Current uh, local poll. And that year, Jen Rosati was a junior at New Fairfield. And the way our league was. Jen Rosati, UConn player. UConn player, mm-hmm. uh, All-American, yeah. and a captain. And uh, she was. Uh, at New Fairfield, she was a junior at this point, the same year that Patty passed. And um, we played them at New Fairfield. We were 15-0. They were 15-0. Because uh-huh. they were on the other side. We played everybody on our side twice and on the other side of our division once. Mm-hmm. And they were the bigger schools, so we played them once. So we are 15. I don't know how many times you see two 15-0 schools play each other in the same league. Yeah. Very rare. So the best part about it is we were going up to New Fairfield High School, and there's a big hill up. And I'm looking around, and um, the... The bus is silent. I'm like, what's going on? I look around. They're all, they're all holding hands, getting chills there. And they're praying. And they start going, we want Rosati. We want Rosati. I'm like, easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Uh, you'll get it over. <laughs> so anyway, we played them. And they failed. We beat it by 13. Wow. It was so loud. And they were like, I had to take the point guard. I had to whisper in the ear what I wanted. You couldn't even hear. So we beat them. So they... They ended up being 19 and one. We were 20 and 0 for the season. It was our biggest challenge. And now um, we played the, the WCC finals. Um, we played against Massac, who was a uh, state powerhouse. But Dave Strong, who was like the king of the high school girls at this time, he had 400 victories, career wins. So we played him ironically at Brookfield, where I went, where I taught and went to school. That was a neutral court, uh-huh. and we played them in the finals. So at this point, we're 21 and 21 and 0. We play them, and we're down by a point with four or five, five seconds ago, and my best girl got fouled. So, well, time out. So I was sitting there talking to him, and I look around, and I said, when she makes it, I look around, and the girl's crying. That's going to make the foul shot. She's crying. She goes, oh, my God, I'm so scared. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> so she gets out there. She has two shots. The air ball is the first one, makes the second one. Now we have over, overtime. Uh-huh. So we have the, we have the um, the, the, the center, center uh, toss, the jump, and they get the ball and they hold the ball. There's no shot clock then. Oh. So I, I stayed back. Point guard made a couple of flat shots. We lost 25-24 oh. in overtime. Mm-hmm. Now we're 21-1. Now we go to the state tournament. So we're 20-0 in the free throws, 19-1. So we're on a collision course to see them in the finals. If that was Jen Rosati. That was not Rosati. Mm-hmm. Still there. She's a junior, right? So they had another guy named Crystal Millar, who was a senior, was a good player. They had those two. So, and I had seen the Fairfield play like 10 times during the year. I knew everything about them. Yeah. So we go to play them in the state finals at Central. So we go there, place is packed, 4,000 people, and go back and forth. We end up losing 64 63. Uh, okay. So we end up being 24 and 2, lost two games by two points. 
and it was amazing. Now, what I did in that game is I focused on Rosati and Krista Millar and said, okay, let somebody else beat us. So this girl, yeah. this girl came off the bench, the name was Stephanie Wanzer, hadn't played three German games, got 18 points, didn't miss. You still you know, remember I, everyone's I, name? I, I, took a I took a chance. I said, you know, let's, and she was on fire, and she won the game for them. And they, they won by a point. Wow. So. Well, that shows how much you cared that you still remember all it these was names. I remember like yesterday, yeah. 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 Wow. That was my strategy. And the other coach for the Joe Russo is a great guy, and he and I were good friends. And yeah. it, was, it was a fun rival. The following year, we won the WCC championship, so that was good. And we had another good team. And the Fairfield uh, was, was we still have Rosati because she was a senior, but mm -hmm. she was, they, they weren't as strong as they were here before. Mm -hmm. Played them again in the finals, and they beat us by 13. We had a bad day. Mm -hmm. So it happens. So that um, was, must have been a pretty emotional time, though, with that. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was quite the year um, with, when Patty passed. I mean, we went through uh, you know, the, the, the kids. And what I learned about as a coach is the emotion part of it. Yeah. When you express true emotion, and it comes from the heart, you know, you're good. Yeah. Because you know? a lot of coaches are fake and they, they do certain things, but this was all real. It was life, yeah. you know? Wow. And it was uh, just sad. It was just, you know. Mm -hmm. But you, you deal with it and you move on. The kids, you know, the kids were great. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, shift gears a little bit, talk about something a little happier. Um, <coughs> all sports with Joe and George. Yes. Um, so first off, tell the viewers how you heard about Nutmeg TV. Well, um, I run a subway down the road mm -hmm. and, uh, a lot of you guys will come in there and eat, yeah. and I got to know you got all, all your staff is great, and you're great, and, and everybody's very nice. And um, I did this story about Patty on Jim Ransom Reed's story, What's Your Story? Yeah. Because uh -huh. I, I wanted to tell that story. I didn't know how to do that. Yeah. And I forget how I found out about the uh, the programs, the show. And and some, one of the guys told me, yeah, you can go on maybe Nutmeg TV. Well, uh, you know, we'll show you a story. So Jim Jim called me, said you, he interviewed me, said, that's a good story to tell. So I went on there and told that story. And then um, after that, they got a hold of me and said that you know about sports and you did a good job with the show. You want to do an all sports? So I'm like, me? I'm like, well, are you out of your mind? <laughs> I said, but yeah, it sounds interesting. So, and then George, my partner, was, he used to come to the store. I got to know him a little bit, mm -hmm. talk sports. And I said, George, you want to do a show? And he goes, sure. Cool. So that was how it, that's how it was born. So, um, how's it been? You've, you're 20 shows in, 21 shows in? It's been, uh, uh, been phenomenal. Was um, it easy, and, difficult? And, well, and I want to thank you guys for the opportunity. It was not, it We're was, happy to have you. Thank you for It, it, it was great. I mean, it was um, selfless. Um, you know, preparation, my preparation is my, my whole life, really. You know, watching, and then all I do is watch SNY and Sports Center and watch games. So, for me, to, you know, I might jog some notes down or a couple of pages, but I don't, you know, write a script. Yeah. You know, I just go in there, and George doesn't watch anything, but he reads his phone. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like funny because uh, I'll talk details and he'll talk, he'll, he'll chime in. And uh, I think we have a good rapport and uh, kind of go back and forth with. You know, the challenge that, that we talked about before is, is, a, is a time of that because we tape on a Wednesday, but the show might not go on until that Friday or the following Friday. Yeah, yeah. So it's time sensitive. So that, that's the biggest challenge. Other than that, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, Great. You know, I talk Yankees, Mets, Jets, Giants, um, yeah. and, and general stuff about all the leagues and everything. Mm -hmm. and you can't really talk about last night's game because it's going to be irrelevant yeah, you know, when, yeah. when it airs. But, mm -hmm. But, it, we, you know, that was the, probably the biggest challenge, is able to, to navigate that part of it, uh -huh. you know, what to talk about. But as far as the material, and the, you know, I'll, like I said, I'll, jog, I'll jog some things down and just kind of go over it. And George talks about his golf. He's a yeah. big golf guy, so that's why I try to not fall asleep. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about George yeah. a little bit later. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, when you talk about people and ask them to be in front of the camera, they're like, oh, me? No, no. You know, people are afraid right. of the camera. Right. Have you ever done performing? Have you ever been in front of the camera? <laughs> no, just from the coaching aspect, uh, <clears throat> banquets and award ceremonies and some of the stuff that I've gotten. Um, uh, things I've gotten uh, lucky enough to bestow on, and so I don't have too many of a problem in front of the camera. I mean, basically, when you go and do your show, you just kind of it's like you're talking in the room with a room with a friend. Like yeah, I mean, it's not like there's anyone here except no. for the cameras, right? So. No, and I, once you get over that, because I remember the first time I walked in, I, I don't know if it was you or Chris, one of the guys said, "You nervous?" I'm like, "No, why?" <laughs> I did never enter my mind. Yeah, I never. I was never into. I, you know, I just thought if I just my biggest worry was. Speaking clearly and you know mm -hmm. with the hands and sitting up straight and things like that, yeah. you know, which I watched myself and try to correct those sure. self 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 correct. Yeah, but that was the biggest worry because you don't have any kind of 
you know, formal training for that, which I mean, I think you just got to be yourself and just yeah. go from the heart. So we would be remiss if we didn't talk more about George. Um, he's a golf pro at Farmington Woods in Avon. Yep. Uh, he works with golfers on different PGA tours. Uh, he wrote a book on putting called Drill Your Way to Great Putting. Um, he's a Golf Channel contributor, yep. uh, and you guys have a great chemistry. Yep. Uh, what does he bring to the show? Well, first of all, he was, he was, he was an excellent teacher. So yeah. um, his reputation precedes himself as far as he's a college as, golf coach too. I think he coaches at the University of Hartford mm -hmm. at yeah, Division One. Okay, yeah, he's a girl, women's coach, assistant mm -hmm. coach there. So he does that. So you guys are both camps. women's coaches. Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, he does that, and he uh, does private lessons. I uh, actually. He was uh, teaching Kevin Ollie less, less really? couple weeks, giving wow. him lessons, yeah. And uh, very busy guy, great guy, great, you know, uh, great personality, funny, good guy, and, uh, and, and is a great teacher. So he's brought a good element to the show. We just kind of like go back and forth. Um, you know, we're not really opinionated where either of us think we know everything, because mm -hmm. we don't. But we just go back and forth, and you know he's he's Mets and uh, Jets, and I'm Giants, Yankees. Oh, so okay. it's kind of neat, you know. Um, none of us are Red Sox. Just well, not that's a bad thing. But, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we just go back and forth, and it's been a been a good little marriage there. It's been a lot of fun. Well, like I said, you guys have a great chemistry. Yeah. You're funny, uh, and you know your stuff. So yeah. uh, it's awesome. It's been um, easy. It's been easy transition because I'm just talking about things I love. Yeah. You know, and you know I'll talk about a game. I talk about what I saw on TV. I get you know throw my two cents in there. You know, I'll watch Stephen A. Smith, I'll watch some of these pros and listen to what they have to say and, and, and put my own take on my own spin on it. Yeah. So that, that's, been, that's been pretty easy for me to cool. do, it really is. Well, we love having um, you here. Yeah, uh, so unfortunately, we're run, actually running out of time. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to? Um, all right, well, no. well with, uh, All Sports uh, with Joe and George is on uh, Sundays at seven and it re-airs on Fridays at seven. I can tell you one quick story, I was in uh, the mobile station to get my newspaper saying some guy says excuse me and I'm like he goes you have a TV show and I'm like yeah he goes I saw it my girlfriend I loved it it was great blah blah it was kind of neat he goes you also work at the subway and I'm like yeah so that was I get that a lot that's awesome it's kind of neat yeah people say because oh, they flip around and they see it and they go oh, I know that guy right? okay you know that so so anyone that wants to have your own show uh, you can definitely you're welcome to contact Nutmeg TV and and maybe you'll be spotted in public and, and right. become a local celebrity as well um, but thanks for uh, being on the show. Uh, uh, you know, the purpose of the show is to honor, you know, the folks in our community yeah. that are, you know, creating programming for the home viewer. So uh, it's been a great really experience for us. I mean, we really enjoyed it. And, and you guys have been phenomenal working with us and helping us out. And I thank you for that. And it's just been it's been a blast. You know? Awesome. And great. I look forward to every week, every two weeks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we have a lot of fun with it. So awesome. It's all good. Well, thanks again. All right, Eric, you and got it. Uh, to all you in TV land, have a good night and we'll see you next time.